بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد uh, Let's start imagining a situation So some of you may know uh, the old or the existing air miles card and some of you may be thinking what happens if we get a Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency miles card or a cryptocurrency card So imagine uh, if you are preparing for a transition into a vacation, right? And you know that as you move towards that vacation, the card that you will be using will only be using Bitcoins or some other form of cryptocurrency. And that is what you will use to trade, to buy your car, to buy your palace, to buy food, and whatever you need, you will be using that card. Now, as you're preparing for that amazing vacation that you will retire into, uh, the way to earn those cryptocurrency cards or the cryptocurrency points on that card is not by using a computer to mine currency. Rather, each time you go to a grocery store and you buy food for your family, you swipe your card, just like how you would do an Air Miles card, and you'll keep getting uh, crypto points, right? Uh, each time you come to the masjid, you get your crypto points. Each time you sit and listen to the lecture, a talk, a reminder about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get a cryptocurrency card or cryptocurrency on your card. Uh, each time you're hurt by a family member and you are patient and you explain to them and you communicate to, to them, you're getting cryptocurrency on your card. Each time you have a flu, you are sick, you're getting cryptocurrency, right? Each time you're doing something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're, you're getting cryptocurrency. Now, the amount of currency that you have on that card helps you with two things. One, just like an air mile card, it helps your journey to that vacation resort. Right? A journey is more comfortable because now you can use business lounge, uh, you can fly business class, and when you reach your vacation spot, your destination, your hotel, your residence will be different based on the amount of points that you have. The reason I'm saying this is to help you relate to the world that we are living in. A lot of time we are concerned about the skins and the bones that we have. The, the amount of money we have in our business account, the type of status and popularity and social popularity that we enjoy in the world. And we are forgetting the destination that we are going towards. And each one will have that exit in which point they will move on and they will either be heading towards paradise, in which case you still have a bunch of different levels, or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, you know, heading towards hellfire and the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason I'm saying this thing is to have this mindset in one's life is very important. And yes, the overall conference theme is that we are talking about what can be done at a community level to help facilitate people build their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is very important. But at the same time, the responsibility also lies on us, individuals, as teenagers, as students, even as du'as, even as imams, each one have to have that responsibility of owning their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, we like to have the blame game and to present excuses. And we do this in the business world as well. We do this for politicians. We do this all the time. But at the same time, look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. In his kitab, he says, Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina. Every person is a pledge for what he has earned. And he says, Bal al insanu ala nafsihi basira. Rather, man against himself will be a witness, even if he presents excuses. Uh, Ibn al-Qayyum uh, puts it uh, very nicely. He says, a friend will not literally share your struggles, and a loved one cannot physically take your pain, and a close one will not stay up the night on your behalf. So look after yourself, protect it, nurture it, don't give life's events more than what they are really worth. But be certain 
When you break, no one will heal you except yourself. When you are defeated, no one will give you victory except your own determination. Your ability to stand up again and carry on in, is your responsibility. Do not look for your self-worth in the eyes of people. Look for your worth from within your consciousness. If your conscious is at peace, then you will ascend high. If you truly know yourself, then what is said about you won't matter, won't harm you. Do not carry the worries of this life because this is for Allah and do not carry the worries of sustaining yourself because it is from Allah and do not carry the anxiety for the future because it is in the hands of Allah. Carry one thing, how to please Allah because if you please Him, He pleases you, fulfills you and enriches you. Do not weep for a life that made your heart weep. Just say, O oh Allah, compensate me with good in this life and in the hereafter. Sadness departs with a sajda. Happiness comes with a sincere dua. Allah does not forget the good you do, nor does he forget the, you, the good you did to the others. And the, pain you the, and the pain you relieved from the others. Nor will you forget the eye which was about to cry, but you made it laugh. Live your life with this principle. Be good even if you don't receive good. Not because of others' sake, but because Allah loves the good doers. So the point being that whatever stage you are in your life, and once you realize the importance of this relationship with Allah and the, and the importance of carrying and earning those cryptocurrency miles, which is hopefully you have realized by now, is the good deeds that we are carrying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the talk will be about the different hindrances, the different pitfalls that people fall into and how to avoid some of that situation. This can apply to a revert, a convert, a renewed Muslim, somebody who, who, was, who was brought up as a Muslim, but then started realizing this, the seriousness of this matter and started practicing and started getting serious about the deen. So the first thing to realize is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is a seed of faith or a small plant, if you will. There's a lot of opportunity for growth here. You can cultivate, you can nourish that small plant and make it grow into a fruit-bearing tree. The fruits are immense, the levels are many. So we have to continue that growth path and build from one level to the other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith Qudsi, O my servants, I have forbidden oppression for myself and I have made it, made it forbidden among you. So do not oppress one another. O oh my servants, all of you are astray, except for those I have guided. So seek guidance of me, I shall guide you. O oh my servants, all of you are hungry, except for those I have fed. So seek food of me, and I shall feed you. O oh my servants, all of you are naked, except for those I have clothed. So seek clothing of me, and I shall clothe you. O oh servants, you, you sin by night and by day, I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness of me and I shall forgive you. O my servants, you will not attain harming me so as to harm me and will not attain benefiting me so as to benefit me. O my servants, were the worst, were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you to be as pious as the most pious among you, you will not increase my kingdom in anything. O my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, to be as wicked as the most wicked among you, you will not, you will not diminish my kingdom. O my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, were to rise up in one place and make a request of me, and were I to give everyone what he requested, that would not decrease what I have and anything more than a needle decreases when dipped into water. And finally, this is a very important part. O oh, my servant, it is but your deeds that I reckon 
on for you and then recompense you for. So let him who finds good praise Allah and let him who finds other than that blame no one but himself. So this is very important because it does a few different things. One, which is what we started with, and that is to stop the blame game and to take responsibility and ownership of our own situation. B, it helps us really learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is very important that as we grow, we have to keep learning about Allah, who Allah is and who Allah is not. That is super important. So this hadith reminds us that at the end of the day, everything that we have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Like what is preventing you and I from being in one of the situations that some of our brothers and sisters are and they do not know if they will have their next meal today. Right? You and I did not really control our situation to be here in this place and owning what we have, being around the people that we are around, being around the opportunities that we are around. We could have been in their place and they could have been in our place. So really, it is the, from the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we enjoy these bounties and these blessings. The second thing is the importance of asking Allah. So this is the most important thing. As you realize the importance of this journey that you and I are traveling towards, continuously ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be conscious about it and be consistent about it, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm on the straight path, increases us in our iman, increases us in our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first advice to anyone, whether it be a convert, a reword, a stable Muslim, a new Muslim, a five-year-old Muslim, so on and so forth. The next thing is uh, to realize the levels, right? So as you have more and more cryptocurrency on that card, or if you want to call, grow in your love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or have more good deeds, your life quality will change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith Qudsi, whoever shows enmity to a wali, a friend of Allah, then I have declared war against him. And my servant does not draw near to me with anything more beloved to me than the religious duties that I have made obligatory upon him, right? So everything that we do for Allah gets us closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So think of it like this, right? So you have certain business transactions that you do. You may have some customers or some donors that get you 80% of your donations, right? As they say, the 80-20 rule, right? So 20% of your customers are getting you 80% of the donations or 80% of the business. So the things that Allah has made obligatory upon us are the thing that are getting us that big chunk of reward, that big chunk, that big boost of getting closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are things that Allah has made obligatory on us. And then as we continue doing more good deeds from the voluntary good deeds, we keep getting closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until I love Him. Allah is saying, until I love Him. When I love Him, I am his hearing with which he hears and I am his sight which which he sees and his hand which which he strikes and his foot with which he walks. Were he to ask something of me, I would surely give it to him and were he to seek refuge in me, I would surely grant him refuge. So now this is, this is the point that this, this, this small plant, this small seed of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can really, really grow huge. The opportunities are totally amazing. So as we focus on living this life, look at these opportunities that we have. The most important of them being the five prayers. So this brings us to the next point, right? Sometime, and I hope most of us realize the importance of, a, uh, of a important business meetings in which we are trying to either get a job sell a product, sell a service, get a partnership, or it could be a marriage sit down, right? We're trying to meet the family of someone that we would like to marry. And how careful and how attentive we are in those meetings to build relationships, to build trust, to communicate, to show who we are, to, to build that trust and confidence, 
right? The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the pillar of Islam after accepting Allah as the only Lord, as the only one deserving of worship, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the messenger of Allah are the five prayers. So if you're coming new into this deen, new into your journey, the first thing becomes that, okay, so advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me is to focus on those five prayers. How can I ha make that happen? What, is, what has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen? The times for those prayers. So there's obviously a hidden benefit, a wisdom behind those specific times. What has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen to be said in those prayers? What is Allah telling me about himself by using those words? Rabb, Malik, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and so on and so forth. What do I learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from those words? And what, what am I reminded of each time I'm engaging in those words in the prayers? Now, as a new Muslim, as a somebody who is starting new, you may not know the meanings of it, but that does not stop you from making consistent effort towards getting there and understanding what you are saying. And then at the same time, you have this flexibility of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what you need, especially outside of salah, right? But in the formal prayer, there's a difference of scholars, should you use the English language or some other language other than the Arabic in your dua. But nevertheless, you can definitely do it outside of the prayers. And also according to some scholars, you can do it while you don't know the Arabic language and you're working towards it. The second thing is, what is influencing you? What is influencing you? So when you are going outside, right? This Bitcoin currency card that we have talked about, people don't know about it. Right? They'll be talking to you about selling things that can make them money. They want to sell, sell you phones, they want to sell you laptops, they want to sell you different products, different services, different vacations. And most people are not reminding you about Allah, the love of Allah, the journey that you are walking towards. So have you made consistent or conscious effort to surround yourself so that your phone, your TV, your computer, different people around you will remind you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the importance of the love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the importance and seriousness about life after death. So this is something that we should make conscious effort for. Do I have consistent reminders that are coming to me either by attending classes, attending circles of knowledge or by using my phone and social media? Then the next thing is the friends that you hang out with. Right? And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that a man will be upon the religion, upon the way of his close friends. And that we will be gathered on the day of resurrection with the people that we love. So who are the people that we truly love? Are these people connecting us towards the path of Allah, to the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, or are turning us away from it? So that's a conscious choice that we can make. Right? Who do we hang out with? Who influences us? The next point is about accountability, audit, or spying yourself. Yes, we have other people spying us, right? Maybe we should say hi to some of the spies that may be listening. But the point is, are we doing our own self-audits? How is my day? Did I earn any cryptocurrency today? Did I earn any good deeds today? How is my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it going up or down? At the same time, if we were to take a step aside, it's also important to see how is my relationship with my family. And this is something that we kind of neglect. And this is something obviously we are, being, we are listening to and hearing from other shuyukh uh, during this conference as well. The importance of building quality relationship within our families. Now, the accountability is also about intention. So, so this is some of the traps that a new person, a new one, beginning his or her journey into Islam may fall into and sometimes it would be that things are not being done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're just there to fit in a social circle of Muslims. The type of activities that you're engaging into, right? Some of the people do go onto other extremes in which it's not about Quran, it's not about Hadith, it's not about the implementation of Quran and Hadith, how the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa implemented it. Rather, it is about people and organizations and they are discussing that and they are finding faults with this person and finding faults with this organization. That may be needed for some people at some different level but you as a beginner who does not, who, 
Like if you compare your time that you're focusing on Quran and Hadith and learning about the deen and growing in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, compare that to the time that you're investing in debating with people and bashing people and he is that and she is that and all that sort of discussion. Is that fruitful? Is that the most important thing that you should be concerned about at this stage? Then the next step is to not educate yourself by just going online and reading from forums and getting into discussions and debates. And a lot of people fall into that and that's why they may have big issues of ideologies and doctrines and so on and so forth. Right? You can speed up, you can accelerate your growth by having a qualified teacher and a mentor to have you focus on things and to prioritize things for you and to keep you accountable. The next, the next point is, it's not a race, it's a pace, right? So pace yourself. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, has been reported to have said, verily, the religion is easy and no one burdens himself in religion except that it overcomes him. So be moderate, seek closeness to Allah, give glad tidings and seek help for worship in the morning and evening and some part of the night. So some people may come in and they may go in too fast that they cannot sustain that and they may burn out. Right? So it's very important to take things gradually and to know your own limits and to, and to keep checking in yourself how you are feeling and not to just like abandon everything and not be able to know what's going on and then you crash after a day or two or even a week or a month. So keep an eye, eye on that. It's very, very important. Now, another thing is that nobody is saying that this path of earning hasanat or if you want to go back to the previous analogy of earning these cryptocurrency miles, it's not easy. No one is claiming that. No one is saying that if you start becoming on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's going to be easy. Rather, Allah has told us that you will be tested. And this test will help you detach from the physical world and the physical relationships and connect your soul to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to long for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to go towards Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ do the people think that they will say that we believe and they will be left alone? And they will not be tried? So that's not the part of, path of it, right? You will be tried, you will be tested. That what is more beloved to you? Is Allah the most beloved to you? Or these physical connection and attachment to the dunya more beloved to you? The next point, worshipping the why, not the who. So this is very important. As a child, do we understand everything? Does your child understand when you were taking them for vaccination, why do, you need, why do they need to get vaccination? Why do, why do they need to be put in a child seat in the car? Right? And so on and so forth. Like, do we have to understand and know the detailed reasoning of everything? Do we have to be convinced? Why do we have to pray five times a day? Why do we have to face Mecca? Why do we have to pray in those specific times? Why do we have to give a certain percentage in zakat? Right? So this is, if, if, you, if you know this thing, and if you're only going to be doing that if you're intellectually convinced, then are you worshipping the why or the who? Right? When Adam alayhi salam was told not to go near that plant, that, that tree, there was no why that was given. Right? Allah has made everything permissible for you, but this tree. Right? And shaitan took the route of why do I have to you know, bow down to uh, or prostrate to Adam. Right? He wanted a convincing argument. It wasn't about who is saying that. Allah is saying that. Right? Where does the trust come in? Where does submission come in? The trust and submissions are shown when you don't know but you trust that there's a greater good that will happen. Yes, we know the general maqasid, the general goals of the sharia of protecting the deen, the life, the intellect, the wealth, and the lineage. But what exactly one thing would do is something that we submit to Allah, we trust Allah, and we obey Allah because of who is telling us, not because we are intellectually convinced. Not to mention that you can easily be manipulated and intellectually convinced for something that is not true. 
Now, at the same time, it does not mean that Allah does not have a wisdom behind each and every regulation, each and every rule of Allah. Absolutely, there's a wisdom, right? Can we observe that? Can we experience that? Can we reach that level of knowledge? No. We may get some of it, but we will not get it in, in, in its entirety, right? And as we, as we build more and more relationship and trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we observe and real, we realize the benefits and the long-term impact of the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is not to me that as Muslims we abandon reasoning, right? Islam is a balanced way. So at the same time, we don't want to have just be chasing the reason why, why, why. And at the same time, we are encouraged to innovate and to research into the laws that Allah has put in this world to improve and innovate in transportation, in computations, in accounting, and so on and so forth. And we did that, and we saw that happening right from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to his companions, to the Khulafa Rashidin, and so on and so forth. And absolutely, we are encouraged to use reasoning when weighing which of the two evils are worse, and to leave that, and which of the two goods are better. So reasoning and comprehension is definitely a part, a part of the deen and something encouraged. Uh, the next thing is uh, people sometimes start worrying about perfection. That, okay, I, I'm trying to get a job, I'm trying to do this thing, but I have this small haram in this. Or I have this shortcoming. So I cannot do this, I cannot accept Islam, I cannot go and do my hajj until everything else is perfect. Right? That's, that's not the point. It's about your growth, the effort that you're making, and, and perfection is not demanded. Rather, we will never be complete. Next point is, have you embraced Islam, submission to the will of Allah, submission to the order of Allah, or have we embraced Muslims? And that's, that's the point that gets a lot of people. Because yes, obviously Muslims have a lot of fault. Right? And somebody coming new to Islam may see some Muslim that may have more social faults than some of their close friends. Does that mean there's a problem with the doctrine or the doer? Right? So that's something very important. That, and yes, we do encourage Muslims to be you know, following Islam and to not do mistakes and how it is driving other people away from the deen. But at the same time, you and I as taking ownership of our, of our own relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to remember that and to differentiate between the doctrine and the doer, differentiate between embracing, embracing Islam versus the Muslim. So what I'm trying to do is just you know, highlight some of the points, common issues, and each of that point has a lot of details to it. But at the same time, let's keep going. The next point being marriage, right? So as you start practicing and you come across the hadith that encourage marriage and so on and so forth, like, okay, I'm ready for marriage, right? Now that's a different topic. What does being ready for marriage means? Especially the newcomer to Islam, somebody starting on the path of Islam, you have to settle in and realize what kind of lifestyle you want to have, what kind of commitment to the deen you want to have, and so on and so forth. So until you're stable, it's not the most advisable thing to go and get into a relationship in general. Now, another thing that happens is that somebody starts practicing, okay, my parents are not practicing, or they're not Muslims and what have you, and they try to bypass family consultation, bypass the use of wali and so on and so forth. Again, you know, a, a recipe for disaster. Uh, yes, marriage solves some problem, but you know, getting into a relationship with other person, it brings in new challenges. Now you have a need of other person that you have to meet. So being ready for that and being, you know, knowing and understanding what that entails. Another thing that happens is that as we start learning, we start belittling our family. And this happens between spouses, it happens between parents and children. Oh, they don't know anything. I have started learning a few things and you start going after them instead of again focusing on your own growth. Right? Oh, I'm spending 10 hours learning and my father or parents are not spending time in learning or my husband or wife is not spending time in learning. So they may have accumulated the same amount of knowledge and practice over time and you have just started so you have that zeal so you cannot start blaming other people. Uh, moving on, again back to that concept of trials. So if a divorce happened, if a relationship breaks down, if there is some sort of family tension, then remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ 
إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير No disaster strikes you upon the earth or among yourself except that it is in a register, a book, before we bring it to happening. Right? So anything that happens to you is not a random event. Something that was planned and chosen and selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to happen at that specific time and has a wisdom behind it. لِكَيْ لَا تَعْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا عَتَاكُمْ in order that you do not despair, you do not lose hope over what has eluded you and not exult in pride over what he has given you. And, and what we know from the Habib that all affairs of a Muslim, a mu'min, are good for him, right? So either he's going to be patient or he's going to be grateful. So the point being that if something happens, right? Some people go into this immense grief or anxiety and blame game and you know blaming the spouse or blaming the community and so on and so forth rather realizing that hey that relationship was important it elevated me it empowered me both of the spouses benefited from that and now Allah has given me the situation let me benefit from it and let me move on and finally we'll end with this point of feeling secure thinking I have done it I've got it and whoever does that among ourselves Regardless of who you are, a newcomer, a, a da'i, a scholar, that is a known recipe for failure. Even the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make this dua, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Right? Oh, the turner of the hearts. Uh, establish my heart. Make my heart firm upon your religion. So this is something to be very careful about, that no one should feel secure that I am on the right path to Jannah and I'm getting there. We should always be careful and always be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again going back to the hadith Qudsi, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all of you are astray, accept the ones I guide. So ask me for guidance and I will guide you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to increase in, in our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue increasing in that. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.